In this video, we're going to be talking about how to do some basic turning and facing operations. So the first thing we're going to do is take our bar stock and throw it into the chuck and get it tightened up. So generally, if we are turning short pieces, we don't need to turn between centers. If we're turning something that's about four times the diameter of the stock, then we typically drill a little center drill hole at the end of this and then turn it between centers following. But let's assume that we're gonna be doing a basic facing operation here. So we put our stock outside of the chuck, get it tightened up. And again, if we wanna get it a little bit tighter, we can put it into the other holes and get it snugged up. Not quite necessarily, but you can see the end of this stock is rough. It was cut with a bandsaw and it's in need of truing up. So when we do this, we have a cutting tool that looks like so. Uh, this one has about, I think it's an 80 degree angle to it. So it's good for operations that are facing as well as turning. And generally with any lathe work, you're cutting with a single point and we're not cutting with the flat. So let's zoom in on this. So you'd like to see that when doing a facing operation that our cutter is about in the center of our bar stock. Now I can check this with a caliper and say, okay, I have one inch bar stock and uh, I'm gonna get in here and see how is this doing. Um, and it looks like it's about 10 thousandths above center, but I'm not terribly worried about that. Uh, that can be adjusted up and down, but that's not a bad place to be. So roughly about in the center. And then we're going to uh, run this machine in and out. You can see the operation here. Uh, we would choose the RPMs based on the type of material. This is uh, steel, and I probably wanna be at about 400 to 300 RPMs, and that's where we're set up here, so we're good to go. So turn this on, running about uh, 300 RPMs, and I can manually feed this in using the different hand levers. So in this case, I can move that cross slide in, and we're just slowly gonna be taking away a little bit of material, cleaning up that face cut. There we go. And maybe we are operating just a little bit high above center. As you can see from the operation, we're just turning real slow on that cross slide. And ideally we try to maintain a consistent um, speed of operation. So that's being done manually. And that's a basic face operation done 100% manually just by feeding it in. And we're getting a pretty decent surface there. So that's what's called facing. And then the next thing would be to turn down a diameter to a certain size. So in this case, um, we've got this trued up. Now we can go ahead and turn the shaft down to size. And you can see we've got a little bit of a wobble to this. That's gonna go away once we start turning this down and feeding the Z axes. That's actually a bit of a heavy cut, so I'm gonna back off a little bit. And we can manually feed this in, and the quality of cut that we get is gonna be relative to basically how good our handwork is in maintaining a consistent speed across. So you can see I didn't quite get that all cleaned up. This is quite rough, but there's an idea of the basic facing and turning operations that are happening here. So now let's talk about the automatic feed operations that are gonna give us a more consistent quality of cut. So down on the machine we have this gearbox and the gearbox is going to give us different numbers here. The top number is the number of threads per inch. So if I'm looking at this, like that's a seven threads per inch. Well, here's an example of seven threads per inch in this quarter, one and a quarter um, 
diameter and it's got seven threads per inch and compare that to something else like a half 13 bolt that's got 13 threads per inch it's a bit finer and other ones that would have you know even finer like this is an 832 so that's got 32 threads per inch so these numbers are listed here in the gearbox and it's all imperial units so that's seven threads per inch, which is going to be uh, about 40 thousandths per revolution. And if we want to have some automatic machine, a real fine surface cut, um, I'm going to set this guy up and let's aim for about, I don't know, maybe 10 thousandths per revolution. So looking for a point zero one. All right there. So to achieve that, I need to have this in the letter E over here. So you pull this guy out, slide it over, engage it to the letter E. And then the other one to get 10 thousandths per inch would be to put it in this column. So we slide this guy over, slide it up. And now every single revolution of the chuck is going to result in 10 thousandths of travel on our lead screw. So we can use that to manually feed things back and forth. Now I've got a nice shot of our different mechanism here for our carriage and we can show you how we can actually engage that to get it to automatically feed back and forth. So first thing we'll, we'll turn this guy on and you can see that we're, our lead screw is spinning very slowly. And again for every one RPM of the revolution of the chuck, this will advance the slide 10 thousandths of an inch based on our gearbox settings from before. Now to engage that, oh, I had the wrong one here, still getting used to some of these things. So this guy, we can put this, this is kind of the neutral position. When it's down, it may take a, the gear teeth have to mesh sometimes. When it's in its down position, we're engaging the top slide. And when it's in its upward position, again, sometimes you've got to be patient waiting for the gears to mesh. There we go. Then it's engaging the Z axes. So this is for Z axes. This is for the uh, top or cross slide. Now to get this to engage, I can just lock this guy down. And it's very, very slowly advancing. It doesn't even look like the handle's moving very much because we've got a very slow feed rate here. But if I show you the other shot back here of the lathe in operation, there we go. So we're taking a really nice slow cut by engaging the auto feed in this case. And then I don't have to worry about how fast or slow my hands are moving. We're just taking a nice slow cut across here will be a very consistent, good looking cut quality. I may stop at mid operation here to show you the results that we get and compare it, you know, my hand feed versus this 10 thousandths per revolution. So to disengage, I just take this knob and loosen it up and now we're no longer traveling. And then I'll show you what that cut quality looks like. See if we can get a nice shot here. All right, that's kind of interesting that uh, I'm getting a little bit of a surface chatter. It's a very nice clean surface, but I can see some chattering effects. And before I'd mentioned that we wanna chuck our material up as close to our chuck as possible. The further this sticks out, the more it has the opportunity to vibrate. And I think that's what's happening in here. So I'm going to adjust this, bring it back further in the chuck, and we'll see if that uh, kind of odd vibrating pattern goes away. All right, so I brought it back into the chuck a little bit further, and I am getting a better result here. You can see there's less of that chattering effect here, um, and it's a fairly nice clean cut. So using that automatic feed is a wonderful feature that uh, instead of relying on our hands to maintain a consistent speed while it's spinning, we can use the auto feed. And just real quick back to that gearbox mechanism here. Um, to run this thing, we turn the lathe on, 
And this is the engage and disengage. A couple things we have to have. This lever, just pull this knob out, move it to its upward position. And then to engage the travel, we simply tighten down on this and that engages and we're back to a cutting operation over here. And to disengage the travel of this, we simply loosen up this nut. I'm gonna wait for a little while for that to get to a certain location. Just waiting for it to get a nice shoulder on there. Clean that all up. And then I'll disengage this nut and it stops traveling. There we go. So taking advantage of those auto feeds are quite a nice deal. Now, uh, we can also, like I said, engage auto feed when it comes to the, the cross slide as well. That's gonna require a couple of other things to make that happen. I'm gonna go back to the gearbox, I guess. There we go, sorry for all the camera work here. If I take this lever and engage it at the bottom piece here, that will engage my top slide automatic feed. So now I could do an automatic facing operation. So back here, but notice when I engage the nut down here, that it starts moving away from my material. So the top slide basically is geared backwards in order to fix that, I'm gonna loosen up that, make it stop. And we're gonna go back to the gearbox momentarily here. And I've gotta switch the gearbox and make it go in reverse. So this is the gearbox for the lead screw and I need to move that all the way down into its reversed position. And now I should be able to advance the cross slide automatically and get a real nice cut quality finish on that. So I'm gonna get that lined up and ready to go. Find that right spot, that looks good. And now if I tighten this up, there's my cross slide engaging. So I've got the auto feed set up and it should be very soon, it's very slow. <laughs> starting to make a cut across here. Now we've got just a finest little chip that's coming off here. So we should get a real nice surface finish on this because it's not moving very quickly. Just whittling away, making chips. And again, you can see our automatic top slide is engaged because this lever's here and I've tightened up this clutch. So we're nearing the end of our automatic facing operation and back here once we have reached that point we're all the way through then I would disengage this guy and it stops feeding. And we should have a very nice looking face cut on here. Again, it's when you have things automatically feeding versus manually feeding, the cut quality is much better. And generally, the slower you go with it, um, the, the better surface finish that we can achieve. So that's uh, some basics of facing and turning um, <clears throat> and how to engage and disengage our um, automatic feeds on the lathe.